Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. In this video, we'll break down and simplify eight recent past exam questions on Chapter 4, Energy Supply and the Effects of Exercise on the Body. If you benefit from this video, consider subscribing to the channel, give the video a thumbs up and check out the complete exam preparation course on Udemy, which contains literally everything you need to excel in your IGCSE exam and nothing more. The 53 individual topic or flashcard videos provide you with mark scheme responses to any question that could be asked and allow you to revise for your exam in an extremely short period of time. Check the link in the description to find out more. Question number one, the equation summarises how energy is released by aerobic respiration. A plus oxygen equals B plus water and you need to name substances A and B for two marks. So you really need to know the equations for aerobic and anaerobic respiration. These questions come up quite often and it's really easy marks if you've learned the equations. So substance A is glucose and B is carbon dioxide. Of course, glucose combines with oxygen in the process of aerobic respiration. They undergo a series of chemical processes to produce energy and our byproducts are carbon dioxide and water. So there's the mark scheme and we'll move on to question number two. Name one physical activity that uses mainly aerobic respiration and one physical activity that uses mainly anaerobic respiration. So that's a really easy part of the question, but then we need to give two justifications for each physical activity and it's worth four marks. So that's where the difficulty comes in here. So for mainly aerobic respiration, my physical activity is long distance running. And why have I gone for that? Well, energy is required over long periods of time, quite clearly, because it's a high duration event and aerobic respiration is capable of producing energy over long durations. And my second justification is that it's a low intensity activity that requires little muscular force. So a little bit of additional detail there, not required, but it's a low intensity activity and aerobic respiration is only capable of producing energy quite slowly. So it can only sustain relatively low intensity work. For anaerobic respiration, I've gone for shot put. And my first justification is that the activity only requires energy for short periods of time. And of course, anaerobic respiration can't continue to produce energy over long durations, partly because lactic acid is produced and accumulates in the muscles and affects muscular contractions. And then my second justification is that it's a high intensity activity that relies on power and strength. And of course, anaerobic respiration produces energy extremely quickly and therefore is able to produce high intensity work um, suitable for power or strength based activities. So I've covered the main fundamental points there that aerobic respiration is suitable for endurance or high duration activities and relatively low intensity activities and that anaerobic respiration is suitable for high intensity but short duration activities. There are lots of different points we could have gone for here, but they all surround those basic points that I've discussed. So I suggest you pause the video here and have a look through the mark scheme, uh, particularly if you had a go at this question yourself, mark your own work, but we won't spend too much time on it now. We're gonna move on to the next question on topic 4.4, which is to describe two long-term effects of exercise on the heart for two marks. So the two long-term effects that I've gone for are cardiac hypertrophy, which uh, essentially means that the walls of the heart or the muscle of the heart becomes thicker and stronger, and that the contractions of the heart become stronger as well, which is linked to this cardiac hypertrophy point here. So if the muscle becomes stronger and thicker, then the contractions of the heart become stronger as well, which of course means more blood can be ejected per beat, or we have an increase in stroke volume. Now this question is so frequently asked. I think if you watched my previous video on chapter four, the exam breakdown, we went over this question at least once in that video as well, just proving how often it comes up. So we'll have a look at the mark scheme. It's the same mark scheme every time. So please put some time into learning this one. Um, lots of different points we could have gone for. We have a reduction in heart disease. I'll start at the bottom and go upwards here. An increase in strength or stronger contractions of the heart. The heart returns to the resting heart rate more quickly, so it recovers quicker. We have an increase in the volume of blood pumped in a single beat. In other words, our stroke volume increases. We also have an increase in cardiac output. Um, our resting pulse rate reduces, otherwise known as bradycardia, which is a resting heart rate below 60 beats per minute. And our heart size increases um, 
or hypertrophy or the, the walls of the heart become thicker, which I mentioned here in my first point. So learn this mark scheme. You'll pick up lots of easy marks. This question comes up so often, but we'll move on now to the next one on topic 4.3. So one short term effect of exercise on a performer is an increase in heart rate. State and explain two other short term effects of exercise on a performer for four marks. So we need to state two short term effects and then explain them. So I've gone for nausea. That's my first short term effect of exercise. And then I've gone for an increase in breathing rate. So I'm going to get two marks for those points already, one there and one there. But then I need to explain them as well. So nausea, which is an inclination to vomit or feeling sick, may occur as blood is diverted to the working muscles, where the demand for oxygen is higher, and away from the digestive system. And then the breathing rate increases to meet the greater demand for oxygen in the working muscles. Of course, when we start to exercise, we require more oxygen in the muscles to produce the energy that we need. And therefore, our breathing rate goes up so that we can take in more oxygen from the atmosphere via the alveoli in the lungs. So let's have a look at the mark scheme. Uh, there are many different short term effects of exercise, as you can see. An increase in breathing rate, sweating, fatigue or feeling tired, nausea we talked about adrenaline being released into the blood, an increase in body temperature, production of carbon dioxide, an increase in stroke volume or the amount of blood pumped from the heart per beat, an increase in cardiac output or the amount of blood ejected from the heart per minute, an increase in tidal volume or the depth of our breaths, again linked to this increase in breathing rate, um, and more as well, an increase in minute ventilation or the amount of air that we breathe in or breathe out per minute, an increase in blood flow to the muscles or oxygen supply to the muscles, an increase in blood pressure and the blood vessels closer to the skin become enlarged, otherwise known as vasodilation, which leads to us becoming red faced. So if you want a detailed rundown of the short term effects of exercise, go and have a look in the description. You can find the link to the short summary video on topic 4.3, where I explain in plenty of detail all of these short term effects of exercise. This is a really common question as well. So I recommend you pause the video here and have a look through the mark scheme or go and watch that short video uh, before moving on. But we'll move on now to topic 4.2, the next question, which is to explain four factors that may affect the recovery time of the performer after the period of aerobic physical activity for four marks. So what factors affect the recovery time of performers? The first one I've gone for is age. So older people tend to take longer to recover. There's my explanation. It does say explain. Number two, the higher the intensity of the activity, the longer it takes to recover. So if we work harder, it's going to take us longer to recover after exercise. And then cooling down after exercise, which speeds up recovery. And then performers with higher levels of aerobic fitness recover faster as well. So there's another factor, our level of aerobic fitness. The fitter we are, the faster we tend to recover. Let's have a look at the mark scheme. Um, lots of different points we could have gone for here. We've got the muscle groups exercise, bottom to top again. So general health, level of fitness, lifestyle. So taking drugs can speed up or slow down recovery time. Smoking reduces oxygen transport and reduces recovery time. Hydration, uh, recovery will be slower if the performer becomes or stays dehydrated. Um, we've got diet, so recovery will be slowed if the nutrition is not taken at the right time. We need plenty of protein to repair damaged muscle fibers after exercise and carbohydrate to replenish energy stores, so that glycogen in the muscle and liver. We've got environment, so exercising in extreme conditions may result in longer recovery times, genetics, overtraining, got the quality of equipment, uh, sleep, so quality or sufficient sleep allows performers to recover more quickly, age I mentioned, and the intensity of exercise. Uh, this is a really common question as well, quite a simple one, an easy way to pick up marks, so pause the video here and familiarize yourself with some of those points. Next question, topic 4.3. An untrained performer joins an athletics club to try and get fit to run in a long distance race. Suggest three short term effects of exercise on the performer other than an increase in heart rate. So this is a, exactly the same question as the previous one, but actually it's a little bit easier. It's not exactly the same. It suggests three short term effects. We don't need to explain them this time. So even easier for three marks. Three short term effects of exercise. I've gone for different ones this time. An increase in stroke volume and cardiac output in brackets because it's not required. I've already made my point there. 
an increase in blood flow and oxygen supply to the muscles and an increase in body temperature. So three marks there. And there is our list of short term effects again. But if you'd studied the mark scheme in the previous question, uh, you won't need to spend too long on this one. Of course, you've got that link in the description to topic 4.3, five minute video covering the whole topic uh, if you need a more detailed run through of the short term effects of exercise. OK, next question. Describe the process of excess post exercise oxygen consumption or EPOC for one mark. So what is EPOC? Why is it that we consume an excess amount of oxygen after exercise? Well, EPOC is the process of taking in additional oxygen in order to break down the lactic acid that accumulates during exercise, specifically high intensity exercise. Of course, we mentioned uh, respiration earlier. It's anaerobic respiration um, that causes lactic acid to be produced and accumulate. And we need to break down that lactic acid after exercise. And we break down lactic acid using oxygen. So when we perform a period of high intensity exercise and we accumulate some lactic acid in our system, when we stop exercising, we need more oxygen or additional oxygen uh, in order to break down that lactic acid. And that's why our breathing rate and the depth of our breaths and our heart rate remain elevated for some time when we finish exercising. So the mark scheme response is EPOC is the process of taking in the additional oxygen needed by the cells in the body in order to remove lactic acid or pay back oxygen debt. And of course, oxygen debt is the amount of oxygen that needs to be repaid or um, taken into the body in order to break down lactic acid after anaerobic exercise. OK, so next question is to describe the long term effects of regular exercise on the heart for three marks. So the second time we've had this question already in this video. And as I mentioned, I think this one came up in the previous video uh, that I made on chapter four as well. So just another reminder that you need to put some time into the long term effects of exercise on the heart. Long term aerobic training causes stroke volume and cardiac output to increase. Uh, there's my first mark there for stroke volume. Cardiac output was unnecessary for the mark, but I always like to include a bit of extra detail if possible and may lead to bradycardia or a resting heart rate below 60 beats per minute. Again, bradycardia would have been enough for the mark, but a bit of extra detail if you've got time. And it may also reduce the risk of heart disease for a third mark. So some different points that time. Um, there's exactly the same mark scheme as we looked at before. So pause the video if you need to, if you didn't do so um, on the previous attempt at this question. But that was it for this session on chapter four, energy supply and the effects of exercise on the body. Only eight questions there. So not that many questions came up in that series of exam papers on chapter four. But that's not always going to be the case. So it's important to have a go at these questions and study the mark schemes nonetheless. Uh, like and subscribe if you benefited from this video and leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions for how these videos could be improved. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you next time for a breakdown of questions on Chapter 5, Simple Biomechanics.